guys, how's it going? Today we are gonna do a garden tour. It's been about a month since our last garden tour. The first one went up May 15th or so, and it's about mid-June now. So we wanted to show you progress. We wanna show you what we've gotten done, uh, the other areas that we haven't gotten done. We're just gonna look at all of it. Uh, we might have to break it up into two tours like we did last time, just because last time both of them ended up being fairly long. Uh, we decided to start in this area because I think I missed this area completely <laughs> in the last tour. And I think it's looking really nice. So this spot we call our back kitchen bed uh, because it leads up to our back kitchen door. It's got a uh, sunburst honey locust tree that just provides the perfect amount of light for this area and things are doing really well and things are in general doing really well in our garden because we've had so much rain over the last month. I don't know how many inches we've gotten but way more than than what is typical for our area so things are just looking very green and not stressed out yet and usually by this time we're also above 100 degrees and we haven't even i mean have we gotten into the 90s barely one day, one day uh, in the low 90s and our 10 day doesn't show any in the 90s so we're loving it having a great year uh, you can see the kids have been out here doing their art on the sidewalks, which is quite fun to see as you're coming up to the, the back kitchen area. We planted some uh, coleus. This is the velveteen coleus. I'm not gonna lie, after we planted it, we had a cold snap. In fact, it took the caladiums that we planted in the very same video. Um, let me just swing back here. So we planted some gorgeous caladiums as centerpieces in these pots. That day, I looked at the weather and thought, ooh, those caladiums aren't gonna like it. So we put the pots back in this back porch for about five nights. We kept them back there. And even under protection, the caladiums got nipped. So did the coleus. And it looked fairly poor for <laughs> a while. It took a while to kind of bounce back, but now it's looking absolutely gorgeous. I'm loving it. And this afternoon, we plan to come in with some little colorful annuals and do a little bit of planting right around the front. We'll see if we get that done. But right behind that, we've got some anemones. These are Japanese anemone that bloom a light pink. They're a single bloom. They are kind of a an aggressive perennial. Uh, they want to kind of spill over into every area, which in this spot I really like. There's some areas where I want plants to do that and some areas where I want them to be a little bit more tidy and keep to themselves. But we also have this Midnight Masquerade Penstemon, which is looking in its prime at the moment. These have been here for maybe three years. I planted six or seven right in this spot. The anemones I will pull from, you can see them like inside here. I'll pull them to keep them away from this perennial and they're fairly easy to control that way, but these have just done so, so well and they're the perfect height behind our boxwood hedge there, which I pruned some of our boxwood hedges, some of them I haven't, and I'm thankful that these haven't sustained any more damage. You can see like a tiny bit, like some of the tips are a little bit dry, which I think is typical no matter when we prune them, even if I prune them at the perfect time. I pruned these when it was, it got pretty warm there for a little bit, but they look, they look really good. They were so wooly. Um, right in front of me here, we have the area with the pink meat clematis, which they're looking so great. I love this, this clematis because it doesn't get overly thick. And I really wanted to be able to see the structure, the kind of architecture of the trellis in, these spot, in this spot uh, because they're all so pretty. And we've had these here for about two or three years at this point. And then we did do this fresh this spring. We've got a blood good Japanese maple as our centerpiece, which I replaced one that had been in here. Did we determine it was five years? It had been in this pot for five seasons and it finally, like the season before last, the top died out of it. I tried to limp it by and it's still living. It's in a friend's garden. Um, she likes to, to recuperate plants, but it looked pretty poor in this spot. I needed to have that height. So we went in with a fresh one and then planted some gorgeous. These are a brand new hookah for next year. We did this in a video though. So if I go, plant by individual plant will be out here for days, <laughs> days and days. But I'm really happy with this mix of plants and they've all been through pretty cold temps. And I think just even the sweet potato vine being tucked in right here, they've been okay. Uh, I did wanna report on the North Star Boxwood hedge here because I feel like this has been the best year for it. We started with what's called a quick turn size. I don't even know if they sell the quick turn size anymore, but they come in almost like a four inch annual size can and they're pretty small. And that's what we started with here. So it took a while for them to form up uh, into anything that we could actually make into a legitimate hedge. And then I had one that was struggling last year right here. I don't know if you guys remember that. I didn't replace it. I just cut back the dead. I fertilized it, kept them well watered. 
and it has bounced and they filled in. So I'm really happy. The thing I like about the North Star, um, they don't bronze in the winter, they stay this color and they don't sustain, like other boxwoods in my garden will get spider mites. These don't, along with the green mountains. Uh, and they just seem to thrive. Now I don't have them in a lot of areas, this is it. This is all the North Stars I have, but they are giving me, I, I don't know, I'm feeling encouraged to maybe plant more of these in other areas because of how well they've done. I did have a clematis and sad news. I had a clematis um, in this container for about three seasons and it did not make the winter. And I think it was a jolly good, absolutely gorgeous. It was gorgeous last year. So I'm not sure exactly what happened. This is a container that we're due to recharge here fairly soon. Birch Hybrid Campanula, amazing ground cover flower right here. You can see it's planted right along the edge of this wall, which we are still gonna be replacing this wall this year, um, as well as the concrete pieces right up to about here. So all of these concrete pieces are coming out. We're going to be doing the brick like we've been doing in other areas of our garden. At that same time, these pavers will be taken out. We're gonna do a stack stone wall. Anyway, I'm hoping that, that none of that disturbs these plants because these were actually here when we moved in. And they're an amazing perennial plant that blooms out like this early summer. They stay in bloom for several weeks. They lull and then they usually bloom again. But they're amazing for like this area gets part sun right here and they do really, really great. We've got a selection of beautiful hostas in this space. Lungwort here, which has this beautiful speckly kind of variegation. That pretty, the silver color. And then we've got hookerellas and then the hostas. This is a coast to coast, am I right? I keep calling this the wrong thing, but I think that's a coast to coast. Um, and then we've got just all kinds of different things in here. There's a spearmint hookera, which has been the best at coming back for us. Uh, it's been uh, the most robust. You can see these. this is the peach something or rather, it's coming back, but not quite as thickly as this one here. In this spot here, you can see that I still have pansies in these window boxes, uh, which we are going to be replacing. These actually, of all of our spring planters are looking, I mean, still really pretty, but you can see that they either need to be deadheaded or they're starting to get a little leggy. So it's time, we're gonna pull these out and do some summer stuff in here, uh, maybe today or the next day. And then this spot right here, has got the columbine, which again, you can see what the rain has done, which we're not used to that. I'm not used to having to stake up certain varieties of plants because usually we don't deal with a lot of moisture on them. They were standing almost as tall as I am. I mean, like right at eye level, uh, they're still gorgeous, even kind of battered down from all the moisture. And these stay in bloom. I thought that they were, um, like columbine typically fizzle out and don't bloom for the whole season, but it seems like these are always in some state of color through the season. And I love this huge drift of them right below this gorgeous multi-trunk birch tree. Absolutely beautiful. And this is a real pretty view. If you look right through here, kind of over the columbine, you can see the Hartley right through there. We'll walk over there here in a second, but I love that view. I also love how all of these turned out. The window boxes here and the containers. I, you know, from year to year, I don't remember exactly what I've had in, the, in them from year to year, but I really am enjoying this blend of color. I think it's really interesting having all the different texture and leaf colors. So we've got the hippo red in there, a fern, and the coleus, and a creeping jenny, and then our colors coming from the yellow begonia and the impatience, but I just feel like it's a really interesting blend of plants. And I've never used palms up here, so that will be in the an experiment. We'll see how, how they do. Oh, there's a swallowtail, you guys, look. Look on the Jupiter's beard, the red valerian, centranthus. Look at that. Can you get close to it? butterfly was not bothered by you at all. You were about a foot away from it. This is a uh, red valerian, uh, also called Jupiter's beard. And it seeds, it is kind of one of those more aggressive plants that seeds itself around. It's very easy to control though. You can just pull it up really easily from the areas where you don't like it. But I love to have it. I love to have it just sprout up everywhere um, because it's just such a beautiful plant. It comes out, you know, early summer, blooms like this. It's gonna start petering out um, probably in a, 
about a week or two, I'm guessing. We'll cut it back and then it'll flush back again this season yet. Also, you probably just saw when uh, Aaron was getting close on the butterfly, but the trees and the flowers here perfectly frame the little seating arrangement that we just put out there. We had friends over for dinner last week and we had that set originally in the gazebo. We had it up in the loft, just cleaned it up and put it up there until we had a really good place to put it. So we brought it down here and I love it there. I think we're gonna always have a seating arrangement right there. I did want to mention though, before we get around there, I do deal with bindweed in this area horribly bad and I kind of just have to let it go. I try to pull it as much as I can, especially like when we go in to cut this back. I'll be able to see where the bindweed's coming from. Like right now though, trying to untwirl it from all of these stems, like it's a perfect location for bindweed. It loves its life right here, but it's a constant battle. This rose also was here uh, when we moved in and I'm not sure, is it like an angel face or something like that? Am I even close? I'd have to Google that. It's been a while since I've looked at a lot of rose varieties, but it is really pretty, the lavender with the pink edges. Uh, right here, we do plan on putting stones or bricks or something, like I'll transplant this salvia somewhere else because it's a beautiful salvia. I think this is May night variety. And we'll put something to get over here to the grass to kind of uh, make it feel like the flow, the flow works. But other than the blue spruce, we've done nothing in this flower bed. Blue spruce though, I think kind of like caps it for the year. I would be fine not putting another thing in this flower bed because of that glorious tree right there. But isn't this the perfect spot for this table and chairs? I just like, I need to get some patio lights strung up in the tree. I think this would just be a wonderful place even late at night, but I've come out here a few times to eat and the view is really pretty out toward the cut flower garden through the grass area, especially once we get more trees going out there and they get some size. Oh, I just really, really like it. Uh, so this area, there's really not a whole lot to show other than the tree is doing really well. We're actually no noticing a lot of new growth on it. So if you kind of get in here, you can see all of the new growth points in here. That is super encouraging. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see these wilting or starting to crisp up. They look healthy and fresh and widespread. Like the whole tree has them all over it. In fact, I was looking pretty close this morning. I mean, there's a little bit yet, um, like this was like this when it came. I just haven't come out and done any. So have you done any pruning on it at all? Yeah, I don't think either of us have. Um, so there's a couple little things we need to trim out, but overall it's doing really, really well. So we're very excited about it. Um, I do think we are gonna move that one Autumn Blaze maple. Let's head out this way. So this is the Autumn Blaze that the uh, pizza delivery van uh, ran into and did this right here and totally like snapped the tree down to the ground and then it came right almost all the way down to the ground. Uh, and it's doing, it's doing it, it's doing really well. Uh, but I do think we are going to move this one uh, kind of behind this stuff right here. So we've got some in infrastructure, electrical, the hose link, which I mean, you gotta have these things somewhere in your garden. Hose links have been amazing. So anyway, I don't mind seeing this here, but I think I would like, instead of having that tree in the front of the flower bed, maybe popping it back in here somewhere so that we could put some kind of a feature right up here. Like put some plantings that kind of cover this, but then maybe putting like a fountain or some kind of a feature as the front part of this flower bed. And if we keep the tree here, I think it might look kind of odd. It's like too tall, it's too much of a big piece. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong in that. It is the end of our line of uh, maples here. That's why we haven't moved it yet because we haven't quite made up our mind on what we're going to do in this space, but we're just enjoying the, the spruce and just the little changes in the area. Also, Erin just reminded me, I almost forgot, we might move this tree as well, which then would make sense if we moved both of them. Uh, that one would move into the same flower bed just back. This one we would move to the grassy area. But now that we do own this property on the other side of the fence, so we own up to the tree line over there, uh, we will probably create an opening right here so that we can access it really easily. And we'll have an opening down the way as well. We'll have two openings, kind of an in and an out. Um, and I think this tree might be right in the way of where we need that to, cause we'll need the gravel to kind of gradually um, kind of swoop over here, like curve over to this area. And the tree I think is direct, directly where we need it not to be. So anyway, that's all a possibility. We're just not sure on that. I did want to show you some of the roses in this flower bed over here. This is a, rose that was here again when we moved in just a very soft pink grandiflora type rose i think it's yeah grandiflora 
It's got multiple blooms per stem, but it gets quite large and nice, beautiful shaped roses. This is one area where I did not trim the boxwoods. I think I still can do it with how mild it's been. I think I could go in and do not a heavy trim or a really deep trim into the plant, but just enough to kind of tighten them up. But honestly, it doesn't really even bother me. There's so many of them and they do create a definite hedge that I don't necessarily need to have it look super trim this season, uh, but it's something that might still happen. Globemaster alliums in this area, still some of them have a little tiny bit of color left, but we're about ready to cut these back. I saw that somebody said that they take a paper plate, make a slit in it, put the paper plate under the bloom and then spray paint the blooms purple. I thought about doing that and like having my mom over <laughs> like later on in about a month, seeing her reaction to my glorious alliums that are still in bloom. Uh, we do have some poppies that are flopping in the center there. I'm not sure what that's all about. I see a whole bunch of roly polies in there in the crown. I'll have to get in there and see what's going on. But we've got some Kodiak orange dervelas back in here. There's three of them. The new growth is kind of an orange color. They're at the base of that June snow dogwood, which was absolutely beautiful when it was in bloom. I'm not sure that I got a picture of it. Can you see from back there all of these little like discs where the discs were? Kind of those little tufts in the tree. Those were all discs of white blooms. Absolutely beautiful and I love the structure. You see how it kind of has like a strong uh, horizontal kind of growth structure to it and I think that that is absolutely beautiful. And the trunk, it's got like a really vibrant chartreuse green vibe to it. I love it. And then these are the Kodiak orange Javelas, which are not in bloom yet, but they're all budded up and they're, they're loving it back here. I'm seeing a little bit of chlorosis, um, but overall they've done really great. And then I've got Queen of Sweden roses right over here. You can see the soft pink blooms. They have a very strong upright vase shape to them. They don't get enormously wide, but they grow like this. You can see that, um, just how they're doing right in here. We did plant a bunch of perennial phlox in here. There's opalescence, and then there's a, another variety that's a bright pink right over there. Um, they're both doing really well, not in bloom yet, of course, um, but I haven't done any maintenance in this bed for a while. I need to come in here and do some deadheading. We have a spruce here, the Tollymore spruce, which last year looked so bad. Like the whole top, like from maybe right here up, was a brown. I mean, you can see these needles right here. And I left it alone thinking, well, I'll just give it a little bit of time and see what happens. And it's pushing a ton of new growth. So I'm glad we didn't knee jerk and pull it out. I think it will be okay, I think. Okay, we're gonna move this direction, but I think we're gonna take a little bit of a break because Aaron's getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. Picking up where we left off, I wanted to show you these impatience. They're looking a little bit sad, but they looked a lot worse. So we got a little bit too confident in our early spring. We did have a warm early spring, uh, which is really strange because it was so warm early on and then it has been so cool. Um, but we got too confident in it and we planted these, I think it was April. It, it was way too early. And I went around the um, one of the nights where it was supposed to get down under 30, like 28 degrees, and I covered everything except for these. I was racking my brain too, thinking, what have I planted that's tender? What do I need to cover? And I just, I forgot about these. And they got hit hard. They looked so bad, and we thought that they were all gonna die but they are coming back. Um, by this time of the year, typically whatever we have in here is showing some, like, some, uh, some more growth than these are right now, but we do have some blooms. Uh, I have got some white impatience in the greenhouse and I'm really trying to control myself. I kind of want to come in and just pop the white ones all over in here just so that it's a little bit more full based on the fact that we haven't had as much heat and these got set back so far just to give this area a little bit of a boost. But I mean, we might just keep it this way and see what they do. Um, plants are typically more resilient than we give them credit for. I am noticing some holes in this boxwood right here for the very first time. And I'm not sure what's going on there. It looks like there's maybe even some broken stuff, like something fell in that. That's weird. New discovery, excellent. Uh, the sprinter boxes in the, around the urn rather, are looking a little bit woolier than these are winter gems around the outside. These I will for sure come in and I'm just gonna come along with my hedge trimmer and do a very light shear. I noticed that these 
these boxes in particular because, I mean, these have had the same kind of activity along the outside as these have in terms of wind and rain and all of that sort of thing. But these tend to lay down a little bit easier, I'm noticing. Um, and I don't know if that's just because I didn't get to the trimming in time or if I haven't trimmed these enough and I've trimmed those more, I don't really know. But those you can see are, the structure is a little bit stronger on those and I'm not getting anything that that's uh, really like falling down out the side like these right here. These just tend to be longer stems that don't have as much side growth. Maybe not yet or maybe they just won't, I'm not sure. So anyway, we'll go in and shear these up a little bit because these are looking fairly scrubby in this area. We've got denim and lace Russian sage in the center here. These always do phenomenally well. They don't have any irrigation run to them. There's irrigation line around the uh, the boxwoods and one more for annuals should we decide to put them in here. Uh, but the Russian sage, sage just gets whatever runoff from that, from those drip lines. They don't have anything right up next to them and they tend to like that a lot. Um, so they typically do really well. You can see the view of the uh, columbine from this side looks so pretty. And there are hostas, great big ones in this area. All the hostas are looking so good this season. Uh, but you can see how gorgeous that is. And if you look down in there, there's some, I think that's white Nancy, maybe. Lamium. Anyway, uh, you can look across the yard there and see that the iceberg roses are starting to bloom, looking so pretty. And let's take a look at this flower bed before we go to the Hartley. Now this is a Royal Raindrops crab apple. I need to do some pruning on it gotten quite out of control. How are you even mowing under this, Aaron? Just carefully. Yeah, I mean, geez. I'm surprised you haven't been out here. This needs a, don't take that as a <laughs> green light. Anyway, this needs a good prune job. There's a lot of pretty things in this flower bed. This is a type of what, rugosa rose, like kind of a wild rose. Beautiful bright pink blooms. And um, this one, it's got buds all over on it, but you can see that some of them have need to be deadheaded off of there. I probably won't deadhead. This one does create some really pretty hips, rose hips. Uh, but this doesn't come up from one single shrub. It's like naturalized in this area and there are just stems everywhere. I mean, it's like a patch of roses and they are full of thorns. Uh, but I really enjoy having them here. There's a Buddleia in the back, which I showed you in a video. I had to take it all the way down to the ground pretty much. It's right here. But look at how much it's grown already. It's super healthy. So I'm very happy with that. There's buds on it, looking really good. Uh, there's Rudbeckia here, which always looks kind of meh this time of se the season, but it fills in and provides that late summer, that bright yellow, beautiful blooms. I do struggle with bindweed in this area. You can see it right here. I'm just angering it by pulling it right now, making it stronger. But this area, and the one that I showed you with the red valerian are particularly bad for bindweed. Um, we've got a honeysuckle, which I'm kind of thinking this might be the year that we trim it way back and give it a rejuvenation prune. Typically I don't touch it. And usually it's completely full of green right in there. Uh, so I think that this season we'll probably go in and cut it way, way, way back. But it does have a lot of beautiful blooms up there and I can smell it. it smells really sweet, wonderful. Uh, variegated iris in here, which they are blooming later than they ever have because of the cool, but this one right here shows a little bit of the color. They smell like grapes. They're amazing. And then we've got a rose backed by, this is a uh, hawthorn tree, which was just in bloom not long ago, bright white. It just looked like a ball of white. And then Morden Blush Roses, which these are just the softest of pinks right here. You can see how beautiful those are. These I do not like to deadhead because they form the biggest rose hips, like big, like one inch rose hips that are bright orange and red. Wonderful to use in fall and winter arrangements. So if you just let them go, let them just drop their petals um, and then just don't mess with them for the rest of the season, they'll provide that, those rose hips. If you do cut them back or deadhead them, they will bloom sporadically through the rest of the season. Pink Perfusion Salvia. Salvias are just kind of going out of bloom. Still a lot of honeybee activity on them right now. And then we've got Lemon Jade Sedum, which honestly, I'm thinking I want to bolster the Lemon Jade up in here. I kind of want to dig these up. And I don't, they kind of, I don't know. Just want to make it a little thicker and put them a little bit closer together. But they do provide the midsummer through the rest of the season interest in color. Uh, Royal Jubilee Rose, look. Got to get close on this rose. Look at this. I've got three others that we just kind of skipped. 
over in another flower bed, but they have amazing fragrance and they kind of have like that smoky pink vibe. Really haven't done much else in this area. Well, I haven't done any planting in this area at all this season uh, because we were thinking initially that we might put in a water feature over here. I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. Uh, I don't know if that would be too close to the Hartley. I don't like there to be too many, too many things going on in terms of like big garden features. That is a huge feature of the garden right there and we still have yet to, you know, develop the gardens around it. But it might look pretty to have a fountain kind of tucked, or a, not a fountain, a pond, rather tucked in right here. I mean, it's got the weeping willow uh, right above it, the Hebe statue. So we kind of left this area open. We might come in with annuals just because we're so unsure about it at this point. And that way we're not putting in permanent plantings. We can just put a few annuals in here to provide some interesting color. And then we can take it whatever direction we end up going with this space. Uh, but it's an interesting spot because this is uh, east, this is west. Uh, it, it's pretty much blocked right here from morning sun. So shady, and then even in the afternoon, because of all of the branches, unless we kept this pruned up all the time, it's pretty filtered in the afternoon too. So I've never really known whether or not I should put more sun loving stuff because I never know if I'm gonna come in and prune on a more regular basis. I should know myself though and know that I don't and just go for shade stuff. Maybe we'll put a bunch of surefire rose begonias in here. That'd be like the perfect annual to put in this area because it can do sun or shade or coleus. That would look good as well. I do still have a big clump of iris sitting here. So Chad, when he came in and let me get out from underneath the tree, when he came in and kind of scraped up the last stuff that we had in here, he, I asked him if he could just scrape me up a big chunk of iris <laughs> because I still want to add some of these to the west side garden. These are the champagne pink colored ones. They're so pretty. So, I mean, he got enough of a root ball that they're all fine. I'll just get to them when I get to them. But the only thing left in this area, other than a few things kind of suckering back up, the plum trees kind of sending suckers up, is the Avatar Blue Spruce. I love this evergreen so much. It doesn't grow super huge, but it's got that icy blue color, and I think it's gonna be in the perfect location because the gardens that we put in back here, the structural part, will come right in line with the side of the Hartley, which is about here. So I think that's gonna be a perfect distance away. So we left that alone. But this whole area is looking very cleaned up. Now Chad is coming back. We were gonna start planting actually last week. When we got out here, we decided that we wanted to have it graded a little bit more uh, because right now, if you were to look, especially in the front, the front shows it a little bit more, but you can see the bottom of the brick here. And then the soil is the soil surface starts like a couple inches down. And on the other end, it's just much higher. The soil's right up at the bottom of the brick. I think we're gonna have, because I do want a pretty distinct step down over here by the maple, let me show you. So right over here, you can kind of see where a step is starting to form, um, but I do want a fairly distinct step coming from this area here down into kind of the Hartley area here. And if we take a little bit more soil so that it matches the other side of the Hartley, so starting here, like scrape a little bit more of the soil away. It'll make more of a distinct step. It will also give us the ability to have a little bit of space between the soil surface and the bottom of the brick to put our gravel layer in and our mulch and all of that uh, because that will add extra height as well. We kind of didn't think of that in the beginning. So that's why we haven't started to plant. We do have the boxwoods all here. There are a lot of green velvet boxwoods out in the South Garden that are ready to be planted around this Hartley. Uh, we just need that one last step done. Everything else, I mean, all of the infrastructure is done. We'll hop in there in a second. Aaron brought this box out because we were gonna start marking off where we wanted all of our lines to be and all of like the grass area and the boxwoods. And then we realized that was the moment we realized we needed to uh, scrape a little bit more away. Now the maple tree that we had installed, it's. It's struggling a little bit. It's a, we kind of expected that. And I think this year is just gonna look like that. And thank the Lord. I mean, what a blessing this spring has been because it's been so wet and so mild. I think that's been maybe the saving grace for this tree. Um, had it been in the hundreds, windy and dry, like we normally are, this tree, I don't know that it would have made it, the transplant, because Nathan did say the owner of um, Malad Tree Farm, he said it was the hardest tree he has ever moved. Um, so. <laughs> Anyway, we're babying it. You can see Aaron really wants it to survive. Look at all the drip under there. Um, we are giving it a deep soak a few times a week. Uh, it really, I've been giving it Thrive um, and B12 complex, a root stimulator. So we're hopeful. I mean, the leaves don't really look wilted anymore. 
uh, but there is some possibility we'll have to take out some branches. Next spring will be very telling as to how the tree like makes it through the winter, how it leafs out. I think that's when we'll know. Um, before we run into the Hartley, I'll just kind of point out this area because it's still a little bit of a mess. I haven't done anything in this space. You can see like all the dirt still on the pellet walkway here. Um, I've got borage. Oh my gosh, if you plant borage in your garden, this is what happens. It's an amazing plant and I love it. And I probably won't remove it from this space because I love the texture it brings here, but it does like to seed itself everywhere. So I'll probably dig these up and give them, either put them out in the South Garden maybe or give them to some friends. I've got a couple of Brennera that I missed. I thought I got them all, but I didn't clearly. Uh, and a sunflower right there. But we're gonna have to about here, this is where the pallet walkway, I'm still gonna keep it, but it's gonna cruise off through here. So I need to remove these and like probably pop them back a little bit. And the pallet walkway will go out to the driveway in this direction there. So still a little bit yet to do, but it is tidied up for now and everything has water to it. And I mean, the important stuff is done and yeah, things are doing well. Oh, the October glory maple. Now that tree, has been just amazing. I wouldn't mind repeating that variety in other areas of our garden. There's a bee really wanting Erin. <laughs> what in the world? It likes all the citronella oil on you right now or something, I don't know. Anyway, gorgeous fall color. It's put on a ton of growth. I'm just really happy with that tree. It's got a really nice shape to it too. Do you like that tree? Yeah. We need more of those trees. Let's go into the Hartley. Recently put these urns out here and planted them up. Um, thinking I need to give them some water today. I did not run drip to them because there's really not anything to attach them to yet. Uh, and then I was messing with this bench. So this is actually a rocking bench and I want stationary benches here that don't rock, I think, because they're gonna be on gravel eventually. Um, but I love this style. I like, I didn't know if I wanted black or like natural wood. I think I want black and I like the metal because it'll last forever. They're heavy duty. This one came from my parents' garden center. So I'm having them look into whether or not I can get kind of this style and more of a stationary style bench. Anyway, I really like it there for now. We have set a few things up in here. So it's starting to feel like it's coming together and we've used it. We've been out here sitting um, the last several nights. Like Benjamin loves to come out here and sit when it's dark outside and the chandelier's on dim and we come out here and visit. He likes to um, sit and visit, it's so cute. Anyway, we recently unboxed these chairs, showed you guys on video um, when we set these up. The table is due to arrive this next month, probably in two to three weeks or so. Um, and the AC unit, we've tested that out. It works really well, but you might notice we do have all the shades pulled. On a day like today where, I mean, it's pretty overcast today, probably not as necessary, but when it's sunny out, it does get really warm in here. And we're trying not to use this like as a I don't know, we're trying to take the edge off as much as we can so that we don't have to use this all the time. Um, but we did try it out, like I said, and it does work well. Uh, we moved the fig in here as well when we did the chairs. So it just feels like a little bit more life in here. Uh, just loving it. And uh, the countertop part of it's gonna be here today. So the base, we had a wood base built for the bottom of the counters uh, because it's going to be just open on the bottom. It's gonna have real pretty legs. Um, but I wanted it open so I could stack pots underneath it. I think that'll be really pretty and functional because I'll need that kind of space in here as well to store some things. And then um, once the base is in here, they'll come in here and remeasure for the countertop. We have it all picked out and the sink picked out all of that. But the sink will be here and the counter will run the entire distance of this end of the greenhouse so that we can use this for whatever, you know, we want to use it for, for potting stuff. Um, we can set up, you know, I always imagine having like a cocktail bar right here, entertaining, or even putting food out here as like a buffet kind of thing um, when we have people over. And then we'll start filling in with other shelves so we can put more plants and things out here. Uh, but it just, I'm loving this space so, so much. It's awesome. The cold frames are empty at the moment. We'll pop back out here. So we did clean those out. We'll probably just pop some color in here for the summer because cold frames are really to be utilized when it's cooler out to protect your crops or to grow things on a little bit earlier or later than normal. So for the summer season, I'll probably just pop something in here that goes, you know, yay big, provides a little bit of color. Uh, the carding mill roses over here are looking especially beautiful, surrounded by salvia, but look at these. Now I noticed with this variety, they do this, they kind of like send out longer stems than some of the others uh, and bloom a little bit more, like they're not a dense, I'll show you some other, the Ambridge Rose are in bloom too and those are a much more thick 
um, dense rose. This one has a little bit more weak stems, I've noticed, but I love the color. I love the shape of the blooms. I actually like that they do stems like this because then I can cut them off and use them in big arrangements. As opposed to some of the shorter ones, you don't have the ability to do that, not as easily anyway. But I think they look gorgeous intermixed with this salvia. And I'm not sure what variety of salvia this is. It looks bigger than May night, like maybe a caradonna. But caradonna is usually pretty dark in color and I, I'm just not sure. It's a real pretty blend either way. Right through here, this whole area, I did trim up the boxwoods just slightly. I just did kind of a, an edge trim on them. Um, but you can kind of just get a feel for what this area is like in here. I typically don't put any, well, one fall, I put a bunch of potted plants in here. And to be honest, it was a pain to bring a hose in and um, water everything. If I did a few things maybe toward the outside and ran drip to them, it would be different. But I kind of like the, the freshness in this area, not having a lot, because this furniture is quite big in this space. So when we do have people over and try to add more chairs in, it's nice not to have a bunch of pots or things sitting around. And there are a lot of beautiful things around here. Isn't the lighting just beautiful today? Like it just looks so pretty. It's equally as gorgeous though when the sun is shining through, especially, you know, that golden hour time in the evening when it shines through this area here, it just makes everything look like it kind of sparkles. Love it. Let's pop back out this way and kind of look at the west side and the raised bed vegetable garden. Uh, this rose was here when we moved in and we've just, you know, tried to do our best to keep it all maintained. We're kind of back where we started, aren't we? But this is kind of like a Morton blush, honestly. Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? This one I don't notice provide, uh, provides as big of hips as the Morden Blush does though. So it might be a little bit of a different variety. Incredible hydrangeas, this is the best year for them ever. Um, even with all the rain, we have had to run water to them a little bit more than anything else in our garden. I don't know if it's this location or if it's that plant, um, but when the sun comes out on the warmer days, they just, they just wanna wilt. So we do have to be mindful of that. Um, I've gotten really close to wanting to take these out <laughs> and put something in that doesn't wilt every single day in the heat. But if we keep having weather like this, I, don't, I guess I can't bank on that though, right? They look amazing this year. And then this right here is where, you know, they need to pick up and start taking the concrete back out again. Um, and then our walkway where we had the lavender here. Um, but you might remember, I think we shared a little bit of a video. Aaron got some footage of the excavator like was right here, wasn't it? Like it came all the way in here and they just did very minimal damage to this space, really amazing. But we are gonna have a fairly wide walkway before it was like, like this wide maybe. Um, and the new one will be quite a bit wider. So it'll look a little bit more like the flow will look easier. It'll be easier to carry groceries in, that's for sure. I haven't done any planting here because I know they're gonna bring machines back in here and I don't really want to do anything that's gonna encroach. Like I'm trying to resist the urge to wanna come in and mulch and make everything look super tidy, but I think that would be kind of a waste. There are some pretty things in here though. The distant drums rose here, many different stages of bloom. You can see what it looks like when it's butted up and then opened up kind of that smoky color and then it turns kind of that lavender just so pretty and then the tricolor beach here which looks amazing I might be able to take the stake off this year I staked it up last year because it was pretty weak last year and we get quite a bit of wind through here but it's looking a lot beefier this season there's some poppies and lupins and hookahs and things in here one of my most favorite views in the spring you can kind of see remnants of it. There's a drift of white bleeding hearts that are just amazing and they come out over the, the uh, autumn frost hostas and it's just such a beautiful blend, especially when all the daffodils are in bloom. This whole area is loaded. Like there's, I think 1100 daffodils in this one flower bed or close to it. There's a lot of daffodils. They've all been cut back at this point, but um, it's beautiful to see the daffodil blooms and the bleeding heart and then the hostas. I'm noticing that that viburnum looks a little wilted. I'm gonna need to get a hose out <laughs> and, and water that. Um, and then the brick walkway will come right down through here and we'll meet the driveway right behind me. But I wanted to walk down this area because there's some beautiful things going on. Uh, we recently cut back daffodils in this space too. There's, oh boy, maybe five or 600 daffs in this space here, the Delnus Haw, they're an amazing variety and they bloom late every single year. So while, you know, daffodils are typically blooming in end of March, April, there's still daffs in bloom in May in this flower bed, it's amazing. Uh, there's some Lamium in here. This uh, Japanese maple came from behind the gazebo. 
and it's doing really well. We've got lungwort, which came from beneath the crabapple tree up front. We transplanted that as well as some Hakanakloa Japanese forest grass in there, and that's doing it. Seducer hostas right here, you guys. These are amazing. There are five of them here, and this is the first year that they're not completely wind tattered and or um, hail damaged. By this point, usually they're looking like a little stressed and I feel like I need to cut them back and let them grow back fresh for that season, but they're just looking so beautiful as well as the hostas on this side. So we've got a woolala right here, which is just beefing up and putting on some really good growth. I do still plan on coming in here. In fact, I almost thought about repurposing Benjamin's butterfly garden fence, the pallet fence, kind of retooling that whole thing and creating just a little pallet fence for this area just to block this off. We talked to our HVAC guy and he's like, yeah, as long as there's airflow, you're not growing like a thick vine on it, you can go, you know, about right here. And I think I could cover this menagerie of units and that would look really nice, I think. But that's a project for a hot summer day, I think, because this is a nice shady spot. This one right here, oh, I think this is one of my favorite hostas ever. This is Woo La La. So it's like a sport of the Empress Wu. So the Empress Wu here will get just every bit as big as this one, but that one, this one, it was planted first. And it's got the green, like the lighter green variegation around the outside, but isn't that like, look at my hand. These, this, um, an amazing plant. I've never had a hosta get this big. So for me, I'm just like marveling at how amazing this is and I want them everywhere. Um, you can see here, this is a green mountain boxwood cone that came from one of the ends of the gazebo that we transplanted uh, over here and it's doing real well. Um, this bed needs a little bit of maintenance at this point, but there's a baptisia here, this pink lemonade. So it's got like a yellow on the top and it goes down into a pink color. This is a salvia. It's a bicolor salvia and it needs to be cut back almost at this point. There's a little bit of color left, but it's white and purple. What is it called? Mm, do you know what it's called? I can't remember. Dang it. Anyway, it does really well here, despite the fact that it's right on the edge of where this bed turns into sun. This is a really interesting bed for, because about right in the middle of this plant, it's pretty much full shade because we've got a huge juniper up above us. But then right here in the afternoon and over to about the rose right over there, it's full sun in the afternoon. So we have a full sun pocket right in the middle of a mostly shaded area. It kind of makes it fun because you have a very good variation of plants, a good mix. Birch hybrid campanula, there's more right there. This was also um, transplanted from beneath the crab apple tree up front. You can see that I've done no trimming on the winter gems right here. These could use it. They're just really looking like a cousin it at this point. Uh, we've got some foxglove. I started these from seed this spring. Those are the sugar plum variety. So we'll enjoy blooms on those next year. They're a second year bloomer. Limelight, nope, what are these? Little lime punch hydrangeas are doing amazing. Now I think they're doing amazing because Aaron has been really on it with the chelated iron and getting things fertilized. He's kind of taken that under his wing and things are doing a lot better because of it. Uh, typically in this area we deal with more chlorosis and I think that's what took our limettas. That's what we originally had here and they just struggled so much and I think it's because we weren't quite as diligent about adding the things that the plant needed. Uh, so these are really looking like robust and thick. I mean, they're just looking really good. Um, Italian ice rose. Isn't that amazing? Oh, oh, even more amazing, you guys. Look at this one. This is the same thing, but look at it from this view. Look at that plant. We just planted these last spring. Oh, they are so gorgeous. They look like sherbet, like sherbet ice cream. They're amazing. There's another one right here, which gets more shade than the others. I did plant a stilby in this space, <laughs> forgot to run drip. Okay, so I explained how this area is so moist all the time. Well, it's really only moist for those two over here and this one a little bit, but these right here need drip. And I just, I kind of, one, didn't think about running it because I thought that this area would just be more moist because we've got a backflow. Or what is it, a, a flush, like a flush out? So our drip system flushes out every single day and it lasts for five minutes, one minute. One minute. <laughs> and it makes this space right here so wet. I didn't realize it only ran for one minute. I thought it ran for a lot longer. I thought it ran for, a, yeah. Anyway, so I thought that this area was more moist than it is. So these got a little crunchy, 
but we did run drip they'll be fine i just need to come in and groom them back groom the dead stuff back a little bit uh, but if you want to come back this way i did want to show this spot right here because we've got an oh so easy uh, paprika rose which is kind of going out of bloom out of its first flush but it's putting on more buds and it's just a really nice color in here i really like it. it's a kind of a bright pop and then we've got a weeping white spruce that's doing really well in this space and then i planted some verbascum that i started from seed um, i believe this is the southern charm variety right here so it'll be kind of a apricot color uh, it looks like i'm dealing with a little bit of damage on these leaves i might need to come in with some bait see this I need to come in with some bug and slug in this space. I don't see any. Come out here at night and see what's going on. Aha. We got snails. What? Well, that's different. We don't, we don't deal with stuff like that here. I'll bait over here and these plants will probably be fine. Where do they come from? Well, I don't know. They just like emerge from the soil when they get enough water. Uh, ginger wine nine bark right here looking awesome I love it right here and then I think this is a teasing Georgia couldn't remember what kind of climber this was and one of you guys reminded me and you thought it was a, probably a teasing Georgia and I think you're maybe right absolutely beautiful they're on an obelisk that I got from Gardner Supply it's in there somewhere um, but this rose is loving it in this space roses in general this year are doing a lot better and I think it's due to our weather uh, the rest of this space here has the Anna's Red Hellebore, which look great even when they're not in full peak bloom. You can still see the spent blooms, and they'll look like that all summer long. And the variegated foliage is really nice. And then we've got limelight starting in the back here. These two I added later on. I did the, the three up front first and then added these two. But then we've got Black Pearl Hookera, which is doing an interesting thing. So you can see these Black Pearl look like they should over here, that dark foliage color. And then these look... Like, is that chlorosis and hookera? <laughs> I don't know. But it's like this whole area in particular, they're really getting light color. Like it's either too much water, right? Or chlorosis. I mean, it's not overly wet. And given the fact that the other ones aren't like drowning, I wouldn't think it was an overwatering issue. I'm not real sure. So maybe we should hit them with some chelated iron and see what happens. And if they don't recover, I'll probably pull them out and put some fresh ones in. But I've got some Ogon Acarus grass in here that adds a really nice texture. Um, we recently pulled the lettuce out of this planter. The sweet peas I put in as a centerpiece are still doing really well, but we'll come in and plant annuals in there for summer here today or tomorrow. And then our limelights are doing really well, looking really good. Last year it was really interesting, and I don't know if it's a light thing, but this one got massive, like real big with blooms really tall. And I cut them back to the same size every year. And then these two stayed more petite. I kind of would rather this one <laughs> stay a little bit more, a little bit smaller like these, but we'll see if it does the same thing again this year. This is one of the 2023 recipes that we put together for you guys earlier in a video. Everything's doing really well, clearly. Everything is like really thickening up and brimming. It looks like they're just about ready to spill over the side, but the center, this is a uh, Graceful Grasses Blue Mohawk Junkus is what that's called. It's a really interesting centerpiece. I haven't used a lot of it in the past, so I'm really excited to see what it does over the summer months. And then on this side, we've got Atlas Roses, which, I mean, maybe a week ago, they were just like this petal mess at the bottom was not here yet, and they were all, all those petals were on the plant in uh, the form of really beautiful blooms and they're still gorgeous. I mean, you can see we, we need to come in and do some deadheading, uh, but look at this right here. I mean, they have just been an absolute gorgeous color show for weeks and weeks at this point. Um, and I think they're supposed to get what, three to four feet tall and wide, which they are getting closer to the four feet side of things. Um, they're very happy in this spot. It's a Southern facing and they get a lot of sunshine. There's some nine barks right behind them. There's two, there's one here that's kind of, I think it's languishing cause it's so, it's like trapped in there. This one's doing a lot better. Um, and then hollyhocks that have seated themselves and made themselves at home in this area. But honestly, I kind of like the country look it brings. If you look at the view from this side and look up at the porch, it just is kind of a beautiful, like inviting, not too structured or stuffy look. And I kind of like, I like formality a lot, but I also like cottage 
a lot as well. And I am planning on doing something right here. I know what planter I'm gonna move here. I know what I'm gonna do in this space for now. Um, you know, we have plans in the future to possibly uh, add, put in double doors here that lead outside, which will change this space quite a bit, and then add on a wraparound porch. Who knows if it will happen or when it will happen, but that's kind of uh, what our thought process is. In the meantime, I am gonna come in and reshape this flower bed around the front brick walkway because it's just too skinny. For the scale of the walkway and the scale of this whole area, I was just way too conservative with how much I cut out. So we're gonna come in and really thicken it up and like kind of not make it all uniform. We're gonna kind of go thicker so we can do more plantings, maybe, you know, more trees. And then at the very end, it will get quite a bit wider. Let's head down that direction actually, because we'll go into the west side here in a moment. We did have an exciting delivery yesterday. So this flower bed right here, you can see we've planted nothing in it. Hollyhock came back from, it was originally in this flower bed. And then we planted the red point maple, maybe three, four seasons ago. My years are just kind of blending together at this point. So um, anyway, we had a fountain that we ordered last year, delivered yesterday. It's in crates right now. It's a big one and it's gonna probably, it's gonna go right in here. And I think once we get that fountain in, I'll really want to go to town with this area and figure out like where I want walkways to come to it. I want a couple benches around it and then we'll go to town with plants around the exterior. I'm really excited about it. So I just wanted to mention down here before we pop over to the other side that once we get down here with the cutout, we'll probably like really make a big flower bed over here, um, probably to match the where the grass comes out on this side. So it will be significant. We're gonna do the whole no dig with the cardboard and the mulch or the compost rather. In fact, we've got a big pile of compost sitting way out there, ready and waiting. Um, but we're gonna do that so that we can put some pretty things in here, make it more to scale. And then we're gonna put another great big tree, not, not great big tree, but something that will grow really big um, right here to provide some really wonderful shade and kind of go over the walkway a little bit. I think it'll be really pretty. Okay, over here on the west side, we're actually gonna come out and plant some things in this area, maybe today, this afternoon when it's so nice out. We'll cut back the tulip foliage. I might take this spruce out, you guys. I was gonna give it a year, but I just don't know. It's so ugly. <laughs> Like, usually I'm kind of like, oh, you know, let's give it a chance, but it's just, it's a piece of work. Maybe, maybe if I, it's so, like the wood has gotten so stiff right here. I don't even know if I can like train it up a bit and make it more straight. I don't know. I'm just not really digging it right here. And it looks like it's not digging it either. It did put on some new growth this spring. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Instant Karma elderberry still in bloom. Uh, it's kind of going out of bloom at this point. You can see the discs that were left over, uh, but it was, boy, it was in its glory about two weeks ago. I hear something. Oh, it's all the pods dropping into the canopy of the plant. It sounded like something was rustling around in there. Uh, Poet's Wife Roses, these came from behind the greenhouse, the Hartley, um, and I didn't know, especially if that one was gonna survive. It came out with hardly any roots, but they're doing so well. And they smell like a fruit salad. Like they have that rose smell, but they've got a really strong like citrus and like fruitiness about them. They're amazing. Um, these containers were part of the early plantings that we did uh, and they got hit by the cold a little bit, but they are, I mean, they're putting on growth and they're starting to thicken up. So that's really exciting. I need to come out and do a little bit of deadheading. That'll make things look really nice as well. This whole area is just coming right together. I bought two more boscobels. It's a boscobel rose, David Austin, to put here and here to kind of finish off this grouping. And I'm glad I didn't plant them because they started to bloom out where we've got kind of plants ready for projects. And they are not boscobels. They are like almost, almost red. They're pink, but they're almost close to a red. And I would have been really bummed had I planted them and then had them start blooming that color. Um, so I'll have to wait till next year to get boscobels to fill in, but these have been amazing, just amazing. Um, in fact, I posted about them a couple times on Instagram because I was just have been so thrilled with how many blooms they've been putting on. Um, these were, were these transplants? I wanna say that these were transplants as well. Where did I have these before? 
I did have these in front of the gazebo. So these were transplants. I had five originally and two did not take. So I'm really thankful that the three that took were the three in this grouping. How perfect is that? That way, like this year, I know that we're gonna have basketballs next year. So this year we can pop some annuals in here. So we have a little bit of color. This space is really filled in beautifully. We've got the Royal Frost Birch, which just looks amazing. Um, the service berry in the back here. I actually need to come in here and prune out some of the suckers. Um, like all of these right here, these are all suckers. Right down in here, suckers. Well, broke that one off. <laughs> That's a sucker right there. Yeah, so I need to come in and do a little bit of maintenance. It'll make it look a little less scrubby back here. Um, but these are edible. In fact, I did some dehydrating of these last year and made some muffins with service berries and they were wonderful. Um, so that's looking really pretty. And um, I've got some verbascum in here too. Almost forgot about that. There's three verbascum, a little tiny that I started from seed. I'm gonna come out this direction here. There's more verbascum that I planted in this little hollow section right in front of the birch tree because they'll provide a little bit of color right up through here. And these are the shades of summer. So they're a pink variety. And then we've got back in black sedum. There's a limelight hydrangea standard, pink perfusion salvia, white yarrow clearly. Right behind you, I kind of skipped over, there's white wands veronica. There's also some more midnight masquerade penstemon, which is quite a lot taller than the stuff that we have in the other side, like in the kitchen garden, kitchen flower bed, they're quite a bit shorter. And then some lamb's ear in here. And as we move this direction, you'll notice that the surefire rose begonias are doing amazing. In fact, Aaron, you probably comment on, on them at least three times a day. I think he's going, he does. Maybe per week. <laughs> no, he loves these and they are doing really, really well. Instant Karma Elderberry right here looks awesome. I love it. I love it spilling onto the path. I love it right here next to the Mary Rose. David Austin, this one came from behind the Hartley as well. Actually five of them in this flower bed did and they all took, they're all doing really well. La uh, Ladies mantle. Also was a transplant. A lot of the things in here were transplants. There's a peony in here that was a transplant. The iris as well. We recently just planted this uh, nepeta just the other day. And then the iris, so that chunk of iris that I have underneath the weeping willow, this is kind of where I want to put some of it. So I want to keep coming right in front of this uh, button bush and fill in this section right here. So I've got kind of that strappy grass texture all through this area and it kind of creates that lazy drift look and connects it all together and it's gonna be so pretty. That's the rest of the verbascum right here, the pink shade. So I can't remember what I say that was called. There's Southern Shades of Summer. Uh, Mary Rose here, there's a Rockstar Dahlia. We planted that in a video not long ago. And then we've got the Drops of Jupiter Oregano, which are looking amazing. They were not in bloom when we planted them, but if you get close on them, you can see the blooms they're putting on. Oh, they're so pretty. And then we've got the Stand By Me Lavender Clematis, which I think I'm gonna come in and clean these up. I let them sit on the ground. Like they, I didn't have these stakes. These are stakes from Gardener Supply. Um, and right after we did this video, I got some on order, had them come in. I can't remember what they're called, but they're amazing uh, supports. But they laid on the ground for a little while after I planted. And so they got kind of a little tattery looking. So I'm gonna come in and clean those up. I think that'll make them look really a lot better. And there's fresh growth coming up from the base of the plant. So I think we'll have a really pretty look coming from there. Um, I'm just noticing this echinacea looks like it's tipped over. What in the world? Almost looks like it was stepped on. Can I fix that? Hmm. Raspberry beret echinacea right in here. So a brand new one for next year and they look really good. And I think they've all pretty much taken, they've been out here for a couple of weeks now um, and they haven't stressed or anything. So I'm really happy about that. Brandywine viburnum, there's some midnight masquerade penstemon. Now I had five in here. It looks like, and maybe that's what happened to this echinacea. It looked like a dog or something ran through the flower bed and just it popped the whole plant off right at the root ball of three of the midnight masquerades. They were all just laying on the ground, just popped off from the top. These were fine. Um, and then that one looks like it was almost stepped on on one side, which is so weird. So it looks like one of them's kind of growing back. Honestly, it doesn't matter because a lot of these things will fill in. And it's amazing to think that so much of the stuff over here is brand new this year. Um, like all of the Mary Rose, all of, the, all of these perennials. I mean, a couple shrubs is all we had in here. Um, so it's really coming together. Uh, delphiniums that I started from seed right here. 
These are a dark purple one. They have put on quite a bit of growth since I planted them out here. And then we've got the phlox and the purple Veronica, another rose, and just, you know, several things that we've popped in here. The um, Budlia, Miss Violet Budlia right here, which will be four to five feet tall and wide. Um, looking really good and more delphiniums here. I kind of tried to repeat some things, you know, from here to there. So it kind of looked a little bit cohesive, but I think just staying within the same color palette, doing all purple, whites, and pinks, it'll all look fairly cohesive in the end. Glow Girl Spirea here, there's Stokes Asters and some more Ajuga. Nothing, nothing yet right here, which is kind of crazy. Not for long though. We've got some more Stokes Asters here and then you can see this area was just alive with color. Um, the salvia is now needing to be sheared back. So we'll do that probably this week and then it'll flush back its next bloom uh, in a few weeks time. More ladies mantle, the Royal Jubilees are starting to bloom and the Delphiniums, these were all transplants, you guys. Everything from about here over to where I started planting the salvia. I think that was the first thing that wasn't a transplant, but all the nepeta was transplanted from behind the gazebo, the irises, the Royal Jubilee roses. Aren't these a pretty pink up next to the delphiniums? Oh, and these are supposed to get about five feet tall. So that'll be a beautiful back layer back here. There are three of them in here. And then this was already here. This is something that I might take out. You guys, I might move this somewhere else. It's just massive. We cut it back to about way, hip or waist height every single season, and it gets huge, enormous in this space. I mean, maybe it's okay if I would keep after it, you know, keep trimming it back, um, but I feel like I'd have to do that all the time. And maybe I should just trim it up into a tree form. Maybe I should do that. Maybe we'll try that before we take it out completely. But we did put in a red obelisk beach, which I'm enjoying so much. That's that uh, skinny red leaved tree right there. I think those are really kind of needed addition. We needed some depth of color in this space. And then these are the Ambridge Rose, David Austin's right here. Um, these open up beautifully, but you can see we're about a week past when all of the initial bloom started. Um, before, like just a week ago, they were just, the whole shrub looked apricot color and they've got a really beautiful scent. Colette's kind of the same story. There is a limelight hydrangea standard that looks very happy with itself this year. It, they always do really well, this one in particular, but it's looking like everything is looking especially like strong this season. And then we gotta kind of think thin to go through here. Sorry, Erin. In the raised bed vegetable garden here, um, I haven't spent a tremendous amount of time in here recently, like in the last few days. So anyway, we'll see what, what we find in here. We've got some winter gem boxwoods. These were um, new this season because I lost a couple of my original ones. The Facelia or Bees Friend, I mean, it's just loaded. It's loaded with honeybees. These all self-seeded from last year. So I didn't plant a single one of these in here this year. They're an amazing cut flower and they're beautiful. We've got uh, onions in this bed. We've got peas right here, which I'm pretty sure I did check these the other day. I don't th think there's much yet in terms of what we can pick, but they sure, oh yeah, yeah. Yep. There's a few in here. Ooh, fun. There's nothing like peas straight from the garden. Awesome. Um, the garlic right here is not looking super great, and I don't know if it's because of how much water we've gotten. The other garlic looks horrible. We're gonna pull it, I didn't realize, but each one of our beds has a faucet run to it. So in order for the drip to work, you have to have the faucet on all the way. I did not turn that faucet on this spring. I totally forgot. And uh, we did have, before it started getting really rainy, it was fairly dry for a while there. And I kept wondering like, why does that garlic look worse than this garlic anyway? Um, so that's, that's the deal there. I'm gonna pull that probably and get something else planted. But we've got a menagerie of lettuce and cabbage looking really good. Um, broccoli, some of it has gone to seed. We did harvest quite a lot of it though. Anyway, we've got zeolites calendula right down here, which I did plant carrots in this bed and the zeolites were self-seeded from last year and they came up so strong that I just let them go and thought, well, I'll just plant carrots. I have another crop of carrots out in the cut flower garden. So I thought I would just let the zeolites be the show in this area. I still have violas in this bed here. I had to spray BT in here uh, because I started to notice quite a bit of damage on a few of the cabbage plants. We had the little, you know, little caterpillars, the green ones that were eating holes. So <laughs> look at that. 
it's going in to find its home there. Anyway, we've had a little bit more insect pressure in our vegetable garden area. I tend to not, well, most years I don't spray anything at all. Um, and I just like sacrifice some plants, but this year we had, have had to spray BT on a few things. There is some broccoli still left that we're gonna harvest here. Beautiful crop. Uh, just recently planted the basil in here. Potatoes are doing really well. We've got leeks looking really good. Um, and then we've got parsnips and celery. So that's what's going on in here. We've got the raspy berries in this tub. I don't know if they've actually produced any berries yet. They've got a whole bunch forming up, but no, no fruit that I can find, but look at how much they send runners out. Look how fast. I should probably cut those off. We've got, um, though you guys were saying this is a, is it Roguchi? Is that how you say it? The, the variety, R-O-G-U-C-H-I. Anyway, I couldn't remember the variety name, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It's so robust this season, and it has made its way up into the rose arbor, which is what I wanted it to do. It's awesome. We're on the other side of the vegetable garden now. I haven't planted much over here, but we did plant this clematis, the still waters, which is looking really good. Um, of course, when, it, when I planted it, it was completely full of blooms. Those blooms are done at this point, um, but it is forming new buds. I can see new buds on this side of the fence here, but this is a particularly pretty view, I think. When you look kind of like through the roses here and then across the vegetable garden, and you can see the colettes on the other side, it looks so pretty, but we do have a lot of spring crops that are looking a little weary and we need to get those out in favor of some summer stuff. Right in front here, the Sweet Romance Lavender is looking really, really good. Um, now we have done videos about lavender in the past because I trim mine differently than I think a lot of people do. Um, we cut ours back to the ground every single year and most of the time people will tell you not to do that, that it will kill your plant and it would if you let your lavender form that woody base because if you cut into the woody base of a plant of the lavender rather um, it can shock the plant and kill it but if you never let it form that woody base and you just keep it fresh all the time then your lavender stays more manageable it stays more tidy and more fre just fresh looking uh, because it doesn't have that scrubby bottom area but it's looking really good it's actually naturalized a little bit in this space we have lavender that's popping up in the vegetable garden um, and it's just thickening up and looking really good. And then this right here is another one of the 2023 recipes of the year for proven winners. And I'm enjoying this one so much. I think this might be one of my favorite arrangements. I am noticing we might need to cut back on the water a little bit um, because the super bells are showing a little bit of stress. They tend to like to be a little bit more dry than some of the other plants. Other plants can handle it getting a little bit more dry as well. But you know, I'm noticing on the Bermuda Beach too. And I've noticed that on this variety in the past when I've grown it, sometimes it does the same thing. It kind of yellows out like that. So we will adjust the water and then just hope for the best, hope the plants kind of come out of that. But we are, so far we've been consistent with BT spraying once a week or uh, Cap and Jacks, either one. Um, and then the fertilizer once a week. And they're just looking so pretty. Yeah, there was no way we were gonna get the South Garden in on this tour. It's just too, too much to see right now. It's hard to believe that this space was that brick patio area. Like it's only been gone for maybe what, a couple months at this point, but it's, I, I don't know. It just looks like so much more of a cohesive space to me. Now that the grass is gone and the uh, little sidewalk that separated the grass from this brick area. And then I think too, once we get the step down, um, like I showed you earlier, the step down will be right in line with the middle of the Hartley. So it'll, you know, be about here. We're gonna bring the boxwoods out and there'll be boxwoods here that kind of frame this area and then enclose this a little bit. And then there will be more plantings around the exterior that make it feel more like a room. I'm very much so looking forward to that transformation. I don't know when it's gonna exactly happen, but Lady Gardener roses are looking amazing alongside the Brother Stefan Clematis. Isn't that just a pretty blend? These are such gorgeous roses, so big and open. And then these, oh, they've been in bloom. Both of these have been in bloom for a while now. And the hostas are doing really well here. So again, it's been a great year for hostas. There are some daffodil leaves still popping up here, but they're looking like they're dying back pretty good. So we'll probably remove those, cut them back this week or next. But all the hostas in this whole space are looking really great super happy with them uh, we are going to be moving this container today so this one won't be here and this one will move over here that's not 
how wide, I'm not gonna make the wide opening that wide, but for now it won't look like this one's just standing out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, this is where the posts were. This is where you walked into this garden and then there was a fence right here. So anyway, it has changed quite a bit. The area around the chicken coop, so this is the front spot. We already looked at the back where the pallet walkway comes out. Need to do a little bit of trimming on this birch and a little bit of planting. I've got some really beautiful hookahs. Now that we have the birch tree here and it's put on quite a bit of size, I think I can get away with more shade plantings in this particular spot. Um, and eventually, like I've got lavender in here, I think eventually the lavender won't be very happy. But I've got nepeta in here and some serendipity alliums, which are just forming their bloom stalks. So anyway, it's a really fun kind of a, it still feels kind of, you know, before when we had all the old junipers and the crab apple and the pines, it felt very kind of like wooded back here, but it's still in this particular spot feels like cozy, I guess is the word maybe. And then in the chick, I actually moved the elevated raised bed from the greenhouse to the chicken coop so they could fly up in there and eat the greens out. They use it mostly just to stand under at this point. Kind of fun in there. Um, oh, so easy peachy cream rose right here. These are just a landscape type shrub rose that stay fairly small. Um, they've been in this bed for a while now and they look really good, like for a few years. Um, we've got some nepeta in here. We recently came in with some super tunia bordeaux, some unplugged blue salvia. And there's a Miss, Miss Violet Budlia, another one. It's one of my fave colors. Ooh, this one looks dry. That needs some water today. The zephyrins have been amazing. I need to cut some growth. So we always, every single year from the zephyrins have growth that comes from like maybe the base and maybe it's, I don't know though, it doesn't have thorns on it. So it might be zephyrine, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, it's blooming pink, but it has like that kind of powdery mildew look to it. Even in hot, dry years, I get it from the zephyrins. So I need to come in and clip those branches out and then the rest usually is totally fine. Uh, we have some going bananas, going banana daylilies that bloom yellow and they're forming up their blooms right now. That's always a pretty look, especially with the purple right below. And then we still have our spring planters going. Violas, pansies, Dusty Miller, still looking really good. Uh, same in here, I do need to pull the lettuce, uh, give that to the chickens, but the violas and pansies look good, but we will swap these out fairly soon. The barn pots are looking really good. So we have, the Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime Sweet Potato Vine, Super Trinia Mini Vista Indigo, Vista Jazzberry, uh, and those are the two, three, the three types of plants I used in here, minus the little yellow violas that are coming up on their own. But they're all just looking very thick and beautiful and they'll start spilling over here pretty soon, but they're all looking very good and vibrant. Another tricolor beach right here, looking amazing. Now these beech trees, um, I know there's always a lot of interest, especially this time of year when they are so vibrant. Um, a couple of things about them, if you live in a harsher climate or if they're not planted as, as an understory tree, so protected by some bigger trees, um, they can tend to scorch. In fact, this one gets really protection from nothing and this one's scorching on the leaves already, even with how mild it's been. Uh, the other one that's lighter pink that I showed you earlier doesn't scorch as much because it's protected by the maple up above it. And they typically are afflicted by aphids pretty bad, but I don't see any aphid like the woolly aphids. I don't see any aphids activity on this one yet this year, so that's great. Uh, this whole area is kind of a mess at the moment. We had a great big trench through here earlier to bring electric and water. To this space and then you know we've planted a whole bunch of things in the back here um, so i just wanted to touch on this area a bit because there are like this blue spruce in particular has put on a bunch of new growth this one a little bit of new growth you know we'll just have to see how it goes but uh, we still want to come in with some evergreens some skinnier ones up against the fence here we need to clean up and organize our stuff this time of year is always so interesting. It's usually about July when we hit the really hot part of the summer that we start focusing on kind of picking up our spring mess. Uh, but everything's going really well in this space in terms of the no dig method, because you guys know this is where, I mean, there's just cardboard underneath the compost and underneath that is lawn. So, so far so good. I haven't noticed a whole bunch of grass, maybe back over there, there's been a little bit of grass coming through, uh, but not bad. The Diodora Cedars, I think two out of the three are gonna have to go. We tried, cedars just don't do well in our area. And you know, honestly, a couple of the root balls kind of cracked when we planted them. So 
we kind of put them in and just crossed our fingers hoping that they would come through it, but I don't know if they will. We'll just have to kind of wait and see. The boxwoods are still here, as you can see, and the ambassador alliums are looking especially beautiful. So I planted initially globe masters in this formation wanting this kind of look, kind of this whimsical look with the purple blooms coming up above. And those are all the shorties in there. They came up and bloomed that first year and I was like, oh man, I missed it. <laughs> I missed it. I must not have like really verified the height on those. So the second year I came in with ambassadors and that's what these tall ones are that are blooming later than the globe masters you can see are done so it's kind of nice because we get two flushes of purple in here um, we still haven't nailed down what we're going to do in this exact space back here so that's why everything's kind of still the way it is um, and i think it won't be until we start buttoning up and forming the gardens around the hartley i think that will be kind of the motivating factor to figure out what we're going to do in this back space aaron would still remove these huh in like a second yeah he would take these out and in favor of doing some other things in this space, but I just can't, I'm not, not there yet. I think these are beautiful and I would love to, that fountain's broken and cracked. I would love to replace that with like a seating area or another fountain and incorporate these into the design, but we'll see what goes, what goes on, what happens in the end. In Aaron's defense, it does feel a little bit hard. Like I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out how to incorporate them into um, a design. I think it will, in the end, maybe feel patched together if we leave them in. Um, I do have a couple of ideas for this backspace, which also uh, involves removing them. And I think it would be amazing in the end what we would end up with in this space, but I don't know what's going to happen yet. I'm just, I don't know that I'm there, there yet. We've had a lot of changes go on in this garden, um, and I'm just kind of wanting to keep some semblance of togetherness in some areas and, and no holes. I think that's the thing. I think I wanna have it figured out before we go ahead and tear stuff out because we have a lot of areas that are torn out um, that we still need to put things in and I don't want another dirt patch sitting somewhere waiting, you know, how that goes. Uh, in this space over here, a lot of the same, you know, things that we had planted before, except for, you know, the big group of trees back there, everything, this Deodora back here is looking better than the other two. So this one, uh, you know, it's dropped some of its needles, but it overall, like it's not dead at the top and it doesn't have dead tips and it's got a lot of nice growth right here. This, so this one might survive. And this one is actually the most protected out of all three too. And that could be why. Uh, we do have some at last roses I wanted to touch on before we were all done here because they are looking really good. We used to have a fence right behind them, like in between the uh, Stand By Me Clematis and the roses. So this area is just kind of, it's one of those spaces that's just open, ready for, ready for planting. The spruce that we had planted is doing great. It has new growth all over. It's so cute. Look at this. It's just pushing new growth all over the whole thing. I love, love to see that. And then last thing, you guys. This area here is a little rough uh, because the boxwoods, we do need to take these out, at least on this side. I mean, we might repeat the same thing, but I've done none tr no trimming back here. Uh, but these Vanessa Bell roses look so good. So I was not impressed with this variety until this year. Uh, last year, and I think it was the year before I planted in bare root, they were just so kind of weak looking. They didn't produce very many blooms. Um, and then what they did produce was really light. Like it was more like this. This is the first year I'm seeing some actual like saturated yellow in there. And they were just glorious. I used them in a um, cut flower arrangement, the one in the Hartley. Uh, and they're a little bit past their prime. We need to come in and deadhead, but I'm really happy with how they've thickened up. And there's serendipity alliums right here, which will bloom purple. So I, they will overlap a bit. And I think that'll be really pretty. And then in terms of what will happen with this space right here, again, it's kind of along the same lines as with the box and circle in the back. Um, I will keep the arbor. I love the arbor. I don't know. It might stay exactly in its spot. It might move a little bit. Uh, we will keep some kind of a water feature in this area. This one, of course, isn't on. We don't have electric. The electric was cut to this area when we did all of our rework. So we would need to run new electric to this space. And that's why that's not going at the moment. Honestly, the fountain, fountain's falling apart too. It has huge, it has huge cracks in it. And that's really my fault um, because we don't, 
we don't winterize our fountains like we should. We don't cover them. We let, I, I don't know, that's just so much of the, of the year, four months or five months out of the year, that we don't get to see that beauty in our garden and they're just covered with some tarp or something like that, or plastic, and I like to be able to see them. But you get water settling in there and freeze thaw and that sort of thing, and eventually pieces will um, fall apart. It just happens. Some last longer than others, though. Um, so it just kind of depends on the piece and where you have it and what kind of winters you've had. Uh, so anyway, I could do a little bit of repair on that, which I probably will, and it still runs. It just has a very slow leak from one side of it, of the bottom of the bowl. Uh, but it, there's no electric to that this area anyway, but then that's why it's not going right now. I would still have it running just the way it is right now, if I could. And that, you guys, is gonna be part one of our June garden tour. That was a lot to look at, a lot to see, and we didn't even go plant by plant, but I just really wanted to show you the progress of everything because there's so much going on this year. So next, we will pop out to the South Garden and we will show you around what's going on in the cut flower garden and in the flower beds out there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.